All right, so welcome everybody to the 10th episode of Digital Business Disruptors, this time focusing on cloud for business. Before we dive into the depth of the topic, uh, just a quick introduction from my side. My name is Amir Sabirovic, and I'm going to be your host today. Um, and thank you all for joining. Uh, just a, a, a remark for attendees, if you have questions for Brian and Amir, just drop them and we will discuss them on the go. But before we, we kick off the questionnaire, uh, guys, can you introduce yourself? Starting with you, Brian and Amir, you can follow up. Uh, for sure. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Brian Kuz. I am in my daily life CTO at uh, T-Systems, focusing on the, on, 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 on the cloud business. Um, so I'm working with a lot of different uh, companies around cloud strategies, cloud adoption, uh, and how you can build uh, and, and use cloud uh, to really create value for your business. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, I'm next. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Amar Grigic. I'm uh, the solutions architect uh, at uh, AWS. And uh, in my kind of daily job, I help uh, uh, people uh, move to the cloud, but also uh, use the cloud for, for their advantage, of course. And uh, with the customers that I have, I uh, advise them and, uh, uh, and help them through navigating uh, our services and also uh, getting the most uh, out of the cloud. So <clears throat> thank you guys for, uh, for the introduction. Hey, uh, uh, you, you have probably seen that the whole world is talking about data, analytics, artificial intelligence, et cetera, but it has to run on something. So if, if data is the new oil, well, you should have your repository of your oil uh, well organized. And while we're moving towards the cloud-based world, companies need to understand what this means uh, and how they can utilize it for the business. So coming to that, uh, what does cloud mean for business? Can you, what is your definition of that? What, what does cloud mean for business? Is it somebody else's computer? Or? Maybe Brian, you can take that one first yeah. and then we'll go next. <laughs> Yeah, that's good, Amar. So, so yeah, it's someone else's computer. Yeah, if you make it very, very small, maybe. Uh, but, but, but cloud is really about getting the capability, getting the, getting the tool sets, getting the possibilities to innovate and change your business. Uh, data is, of course, there a, a big driver in uh, with, 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 with data, using data to make make more informed, better and faster decisions. Possibilities to change your, your your business and adapt your business in an, in, in a very fast changing world. Uh, that's really for me the truth about about, about cloud. And that is back on incidents running on some hardware. Yeah, but it is really about those capabilities. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that, uh, Brian. And uh, I, I think if I need to summarize it a little bit, for me, uh, what it means for businesses is that they have the ability to innovate much more at a it, at a much more rapid pace. So. Uh, just being able to start up uh, whatever resources you need within a few minutes instead of waiting for procurement, uh, buying servers, uh, building your data center. Um, I think that's uh, one of the, the, the key drivers that, uh, that I see uh, a lot of uh, businesses using the cloud for. Okay, but, but can you make this understandable for me? So uh, in, in what is the previous setting compared to the future setting? So if I understand you correctly, we're talking about you're your having an IT department that runs all your, or your application, that runs your all installments. You have to go by to, to get something. And we all know that IT departments are always on the third or the fourth floor, floor of, a, of a company. And there you go. And then you get all these kinds of questions that you're actually not waiting on before you can get there. Do I understand it correctly? If I move to the cloud, it's just a few clicks away and I don't need an IT department? Um, yeah, you will still need an IT department just to be able to manage everything. But uh, I think the main difference is uh, when you look at uh, some of the more traditional uh, businesses, what you will see is that they have a data center or they uh, have uh, some space that they leased from a, a particular data center uh, and have their own servers, so their own hardware uh, that they also need to maintain, right? So uh, those servers, uh, whatever uh, lifetime they have, they have. Uh, but also it means that, uh, for example, anything can happen, right? A hard disk can break or uh, there can be a, a problem in the data center. Those are all things that you need to deal with as a business uh, that, uh, for example, when you use the cloud are being taken away from you. I think that's that's what, what kind of the thing that I was alluding to uh, later on. And uh, yes, and is a few clicks, right? It's just clicking through uh, or even uh, doing it on a developer level 
uh, calling some APIs in this case, so being able to integrate it within your own application as well. Uh, I think that's the that's the the case I was referring to for uh, meaning for cloud for business at, at this case. Yeah, no. I, I I agree with you, Ahmed, in that uh, that that sense. But I, I the, the just just look at what happened now a bit more than a year ago, where suddenly whole companies started to 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 work from home. Mm -hmm. If you would have been in a one hundred percent, let's say. Uh, set up in your own data center on fixed hardware, and you certainly have to increase your 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 virtual desktop environment uh, with a factor 100. Well, good luck yeah. Yeah. with the with, with the with the scalability, uh, the flexibility of the cloud. Then it's doable, and 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 we've seen it. We've seen how many companies were able to 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 quickly change the way how they worked and 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 have have the, 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 their MP still working. And, and that's one of the things with the cloud. And, and another thing is for me, the ease of use. And so, so if, if we look at data, um, the idea about data analytics, uh, big data is not brand new. It's not of cloud. I, uh, 20 years ago, I was working in the CRM market and I came across a company called in that time data distilleries. They were able to explore data and find uh, correlations with nobody knew. For example, uh, people driving blue car have three times more accidents than people driving a yellow car. That costed hundred thousands of, in that time, guilders, uh, specialized people, very high educated, a lot of hardware which they had to have on premises. Well, these days, bring your data to the cloud, get, get, get an experienced data scientist, uh, a few clicks, and you have the first results. That's totally different. And that's for me the true value of the cloud. But, but if I understand it then correctly, uh, the accessibility of the cloud solutions, which were only, uh, well, affordable for the corporates 10 years ago, because, you know, uh, yeah. I believe that Wolf Fargo had this own satellites and you can, you know, it, everything was connected and they were using data. You could get your meds uh, throughout the United States. But nowadays it's accessible not only for the corporates, but it's also accessible for the small and medium uh, enterprises um, and, and down even to the level of freelancers. So uh, the deployment of new applications and et cetera, and testing of new application has ha, the, 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 the life cycle or the, um, the term of innovation and launching something has shortened. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, I mean, it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. And you see that a lot of small, medium businesses or startups, uh, people just starting out with their company are uh, immediately drawn to the cloud because because of the low entry, right? Uh, because of the, the entry point being so low. Uh, in some cases, uh, there is even a free tier uh, in, in the case of our uh, own cloud. Uh, there is a free tier where people can just start off uh, see how it works. Uh, get to know. Uh, get get familiar with uh, with the console. Get uh, things running uh, within a few minutes, and also see the the power that it gives them. And I think that's uh, that's exactly uh, what uh, uh, what the cloud brings. Right? Is that low entry point uh, for anybody that wants to to build their own applications, their their own business on on top of the cloud. And does this also mean that you can ramp up your processing power? Very easily. Yeah, sure. It depends on the case, of course. But uh, when you look at uh, what Brian mentioned, uh, right, uh, if you have this particular case that, for example, your business takes off, right? Uh, there's a lot of orders coming in. Uh, there's, for example, if you're in retail, uh, there's a lot of orders coming in and people want to uh, use uh, your website. They want to have the product that you're selling right now and you need to ramp up that processing power is there, right? Whereas if you have, uh, for example, you've leased one server or you've leased two servers, that's your capacity, right? And that's, that's, where, it, uh, that's where it stops. So that's, the, uh, that's uh, certainly the case, yes. Um, and, and, and Brian just mentioned it, OT, operational technologies uh, uh, versus uh, information technologies. How does this apply to the, you know, uh, companies that are physically attached to machines and stuff. I, I can, if you're running internet business, you know, or your software development company, then, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. But what if your full company is tied to a physical process? How does that go with each other? Can you elaborate on that? Sure, yeah, Brian, maybe. Yeah, let, let, 
so so what what you see of course if if, if you look at the let's call manufacturing industry yeah, you see that the whole uh, developments around smart industry that uh, it's it's no longer a fixed process and fixed line but but the world is changing you want to change faster uh, your products maybe you want to automate uh, there's a there's a strong uh, push on further of automation in the ot but for that you need to have data you need to collect data you have to, you have, you have to make decisions on data so one of the things which you now see in the ot domain is that artificial intelligence is really getting closer and closer and integrated with 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 with, with ot technology even uh, just to already start steering the processes at the beginning i just learned this morning about the use case um, where they have a an, 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 an technology that that they make stamps into in, 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 into into metal, and they cannot predict at this moment in time for a specific machine when they have to change the stamp itself because it can happen like that. And if you're too late, then they miss 200k because they have to stop the machine. They cannot produce and with bringing AI and, and, and learning those machines and, and see the anomalies in those, those machines, they can already start predicting one or two days up front that they have to do something. And only by that day, they are, are, are saving hundreds of thousands of euros a year in, 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 in missed production or in work to, to, to replace things later on, restart the processes again. And just think about that, if, if you can do that and you can integrate it with the cloud and have the real trends around that and, and use that again in your supply chain to change the supply chain if a machine stops and, and then maybe you have to replan a lot of things. Well, that's, that, that's really where OT and the real physical world is entering the, the, the cloud world too. That's a really interesting one. So if you tie this to the supply chain, this enables the, the companies actually to order the new stamps before they're even uh, broken down, so it reduces the fallouts, right, of the complete development process or manufacturing process, if you may. Yeah, yeah, you see, you see more of those ex examples, sir, like like with welding processes where they use uh, the cloud capabilities to to really check with with, with visualizing checks of that that welding uh, together with 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 AI and machine learning to see if that welding was was made correctly. In the past, they had one person looking that trying to 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 check it based on his experience or her experience if it's good or not. Now they can do it automated. There's, those simple use cases are, are are powered by by the innovative power of, of of the cloud, and so so we talked earlier about scalability, agility, flexibility. But what I like about the cloud is the pure speed of innovation the cloud platforms are making, getting getting new capabilities in, making life of business users, but also of IT users easier so that they can focus on where they need to focus on. And that's not a not, not a server or a an, switch notice on how to do a better business and how to serve the clients better. And so so that 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 that's one of the things where I say, hey, that's what I like. Okay. So so the scalability and actually innovating uh, using technology or cloud to leverage your business model. Yeah. That's actually what's cloud about. So you're making the innovation within, within your current application landscape much easier to implement. But here's a, a question, because in theory, theory and practice are the same, and in practice, they're not. Um, you have these companies running on multiple landscapes, and I've seen corporates that are actually, you know, they have like 400 applications. They have no clue. You know, there is no API management in place. There is there is nothing in place. Looks like they're scattered. Something does it work. Don't touch it. Um, how about integrating everything into the cloud? So you were talking about your full supply chain within the companies. Doesn't matter what kind of clients you're serving or what your end product is. How tough is it to make this transition and to integrate everything that you need in your current process and implement it in the cloud? Or will it always be a hybrid version or... What what do you have some cases or or examples where this is the case or where you should think about hybrid solution or cloud only or I think I think there are multiple ways that uh, that businesses are tackling it right now. So uh, some, as we mentioned, like startups, some some SMBs, uh, they just uh, go to the cloud and they say like, okay, that's where we're building everything. 
uh, that's it, right? But if you have that legacy that uh, most companies have, right? Uh, if you're in business for 20, 30 years, you're going to have some legacy. It's just, uh, it, it, it's, it's not feasible that you won't have any legacy within your company, right? So what you see is that um, people will uh, migrate their kind of non uh, critical uh, workloads first, where they see like, okay, these are workloads that we can migrate to the cloud without ma- much effort, right? We can move over the the virtual machines, for example, or something like that to the cloud and start using that. So that's fine. Uh, but there are also things that cannot be migrated, right? Uh, because of uh, the hardware it's tied to or whatever. Um, so what you see there is that people are trying to uh, reinvent themselves, right? So they're trying to reinvent invent some of the processes that they already have. So if they have a particular process that cannot be uh, migrated, uh, they will usually look into, okay, can we uh, maybe use a SaaS product, right? Instead of what we're using locally right now. So maybe they have some kind of CRM or something like that uh, running locally first. And now they're going to the cloud and they're saying like, okay, uh, instead of us building it uh, from the ground up again, we're just going to use a SaaS product, right? We're going to use a particular CRM product that's on the market right now. Um, so you, you see different avenues that people are going in. So uh, some will say, okay, let's just migrate what we have. Some will say, let's re-architect what we have. So let's think about what we have right now and how it would fit if we use the power of the cloud. So using some of the services that are uh, readily available instead of doing it ourselves. And some of them will maybe even say like, we're going to stay with this particular application because we don't need to move it. It's fine as it is right now. Down the line, we'll we'll change it, right? So there's multiple avenues that you can go in. So we talk about this uh, this particular thing that we call, uh, you're either going to re-platform, you're going to re-architect, uh, you're going to leave it as is, or you're going to kill it off eventually, right? Because it's not, it served its use and we're not going to use it anymore. So there are multiple avenues that you can go in. And uh, what, what works is uh, also uh, the thing that works for your company, right? It depends on your particular use case that you have. And that can be whatever uh, the, the case is within your company. Yeah, and- I, think, I think that's a good point. Uh, I, 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 I'm, so, so what I, there is a reason why we talk about cloud adoption and cloud journeys. Yeah. Um, and, and 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 that's exactly what what Amal was 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 telling here. Every starting point of each company is different, but some companies are already in the cloud before they know it because somebody in the marketing did, uh, bought some uh, some applications or did some uh, did did some websites in the cloud. Um, but no matter where you are. Uh, if you're already a bit mature, totally not a mature part in the cloud, not in the cloud, it's important that you start thinking about how I'm going to do a structured approach. How am I going to put down an, 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 an strategy, strategy to, to adopt the cloud for my company? And, and one of the key things what Amor was telling about is start looking at your application landscape, start assessing your application landscape and decide per workload per application what to do because the reality is that there are still mainframes out there in the, in, in, in the world. Well, mainframe in the cloud, there are possibilities to do that even these, these days, but it's not the most recommended uh, approach. Um, what you also see in cloud, that, that, that for me, there's no one cloud anymore. Uh, when we talked about cloud in, in, the, in the past week, TV talked about that, 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 that big environment somewhere in a location where we centralize everything if you now look at what what's happening is that that cloud is going back there to 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 really the on the, the the premises of 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 the customers partly because there is so much data being generated in 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 in, in supply chains in 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 manufacturing locations that you, that you need the power of the cloud also locally now to to really start doing that so so what you really will see, and, and I, 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 I said three years ago, five years, and I say today again, five years, it will take at least five years and, and most likely 10 and maybe 15 or maybe 20 years that we will be in hybrid, uh, hybrid situations, simply because you don't, don't change your legacy environment like that, especially not with big companies. But is the, the lack of knowledge from your application land, landscape and actually your, your, your processes, is this the, one of the bottlenecks? 
it can be one of the bottlenecks. Right? So, so I, I know from from a big government organization that I, I, I talked then about already ten years ago, and I was working at that time at an uh, at, at, at another so, so, software company, and it's even fifteen years ago already, and they used our software. We knew that, but nobody could tell where that software was used in which processes. And and that's the reality still in a lot of companies. Oh, there is a, there there is a software application. It's 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 running. And nobody knows what it's doing. Who's the owner? If it's key, and and that's that that those are struggles, and that's that's something which can get clear, not solved, but it gets clear in an application assessment because you start to learn how that application is fitting other applications. Is it used daily, weekly, monthly? Is it interfacing maybe with something? Um, and the, the, I know there is a last resort with some big companies that just turn it off and see who's going to scream. But but that's the, but that's but that's the truth. There is so much old IT out there in companies still that that it is not 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 an easy thing to 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 say. Hey, and now we go say goodbye and, and and do it. No, but I'm 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 well aware that you cannot just push something out. But I'm convinced, and this is not only cloud, but I think in general, it's actually everything in processes should be documented. So, and, and in case the tacit knowledge from the company disappears, you're always always able to see what's going on, where, which applications run. Otherwise you end up paying paying for something that nobody's using, right? So you, you're, you're not in control. That's the theory. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, right, right point. I mean, that's, that's the theory. Um, however, uh, if 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 I see um, the more newer implementations, uh, especially uh, if if it's happening in a more structured approach towards the cloud, then you see that they start using tagging policies, uh, that they start using uh, automated discovery, that they, uh, there's much maturity around software development. Uh, uh, with 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 the C C D pipelines, with 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 devils, where you, where you make the developer responsible for the operations, uh, that all helps to solve this towards the future. It does not help in solving the problem we have today from from the past. That's that yeah. that, that that that's true, and and that means that in some cases, you have to do quite a lot of yeah, uh, call it retro retrofitting retro retro describing of, of 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 what you have and we see that happening uh, still in a lot of companies that's that's the truth because some applications are 10 years old 15 years old and it's still there and no nobody knows anymore exactly what it was but i always refer to this like pre i i have two separations of companies you have pre 2000 companies and after 2000 companies uh, why I say that is because I believe after 2000, the companies that started up that exist today are much more uh, technology savvy and data savvy. While the company that is, you know, royal, like 100 years old, you know, I, I know for some banks that, you know, they have mainframes there with post-its on it. They just don't have weaponized the security guard next to them. It's like, don't touch. We don't know what it does, but it's important for a process. So, so don't yeah. touch touch it don't change anything um but if it was documented from day one then this problem wouldn't exist i would yeah. say but yeah it, it, it's it's partially partially true right um in some cases uh, these particular mainframes still have these uh these maybe old programming languages that are used uh, not a lot of developers that use that anymore so that that happens right it it, it can uh, it can happen that that uh, that that becomes a reality. Of course, it depends on the type of company you have, and of course how long you've been going, uh, how that uh, adoption is. Um, but it's it's not even that clear cut. As in, okay, these companies maybe are using the cloud more. Of course, you will see that startups will say like, okay, they're not going to run a data center anymore, right? That that, that doesn't uh, that doesn't fit their uh, kind of way of working anymore because they want to move fast, want to innovate fast. Um, but uh, on the other hand, uh, you also see that uh, even the companies that are, uh, as you said, maybe pre-2000 are also seeing that they need to uh, move in this particular direction because uh, they, they want to change that mindset, right? They want to change that mindset of uh, we have limited capabilities right now in terms of scaling, in terms of uh, uh, incorporating all the, the, uh, 
the resources that we have and going into like, okay, what do we need to build? What do we need to create business value with and start focusing on that instead of uh, thinking about how many servers do we need to buy next year? Uh, so that's the, that's what the, the actual goal is for those companies. And you see that they're using the cloud to do that. So this is the flexibility that you're talking about. They can ramp up and scale down whenever they want. It's, it's flexibility partially, but also that just heavy lifting, right? Uh, we call it undifferentiated, undifferentiated heavy lifting. So we're talking about uh, heavy lifting that you're doing that's not creating that business impact that, you're, that you want right now. Uh, the business value that you want right now is that uh, if I want to, for example, what Brian mentioned, if I want to do something with computer vision, uh, if I want to do something in terms of artificial intelligence, um, maybe I don't have enough data to create that model to be able to see uh, what's wrong with the particular part or something like that. And that's where the cloud comes in, where you have these pre-trained models that you can use uh, to do that particular computer vision that you wanted to do. Instead of you spending like months maybe creating the correct computer model for it, right? Or the machine learning model in this case. Uh, so it, it takes away that heavy lifting uh, that you don't need to do. And it also brings it back to what we already mentioned, that low point of entry, right? Uh, you don't need to have the machine learning experience to be able to use that computer vision. You just give it the image that you want and make it do what you want to do. So recognize a particular fault in a part or whatever, right? So I think that's uh, also a big part, not just the flexibility of being able to ramp up, but also uh, being able to say like, okay, this is what we want to focus on. This is the actual problem we want to solve. And this is how we're going to do it. And what do you see as the biggest challenge? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good question. I, I think the biggest one is actually the mindset change. It's not even the technology change. It's just mindset change from, for example, grow, going from on-premises to cloud, right? Changing your thinking from just using the resources that you have right now uh, into, uh, okay, what are we going to solve, as I mentioned, right? In, into, okay, we have this particular business problem that we want to solve. This is the way we're going to use it. We're going to use these particular services. Instead of thinking, oh, we need to build an application, uh, do some stuff. We need to uh, uh, have some, some particular service that it needs to run on. Uh, so it, it's kind of taking away those layers of uh, having hardware uh, below it just to be able to do a particular thing. I think that's, that's the, the, the biggest challenge I see uh, people struggling with, just making sure like, okay, we're, we're not talking service here. We're talking business problem and business value. And this is how we're going to solve it without even starting with the, the, the technology part, right? Uh, so I think that's one of the biggest challenges I see. Yeah, I agree with you. Mindset is is important in the areas you you mentioned, but also, uh, I mean, just said think about the IT somewhere there on the fourth, the fourth fourth floor in the in the past. I I now see that if you really want to benefit around with 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 with, with the cloud, then business and IT need to need to to kind of fuse even. Yeah, so so IT needs to understand much more around the business, but business also needs to understand much more about technology. Uh, and 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 that's that's something which which changes the traditional governance and the traditional way of working in companies dramatically. And I see a lot of companies now adopting uh, uh, agile as and 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 changing the company more agile, not because they like agile, agile like, so makes them more flexible, faster, et, et cetera, But it is a way to combine the business knowledge and the IT knowledge together in products and 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 start working together as one. And and I think that mindset is crucial. But that's an interesting point that you're making because agile is not only the methodology, but it's also a way of thinking. It's a mindset. Absolutely. So everything is mindset. Then the question is, uh, it, it's not technology first, but actually everything is change management, if I understand you correctly. So we, when we come to that, what is then the right process to start thinking about cloud? Brian, maybe you can take that one. Yeah, I, I'm thinking is if there is a right process. Again, TTD versus. Uh, it depends, as always. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course you have you have your business case that is always tailored to a certain market, certain industry, certain uh, customer. So it's, it's always you know it's like a puzzle, you know, it's the, the box of Lego, and then depends on 
what, what it turns out. But what I'm trying to ask you, if you would say, this is the model and approach, and this is how you should approach cloud, what would be the steps? In, 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 in my view, it starts with your business strategy. Uh, if, if, if you read a lot, a lot, lot, lot of the publications uh, from, 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 for example, McKinsey or, 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 or Gartner, uh, there, there, there are a lot of words in that as, as always, but there's also a lot of good points in there. And one of those points is that if the successful companies, and you see that in the research, is that they have a CEO who is understanding the, the, the benefits of technology, who makes who makes technology a key part of his business strategy. And if that then derives to a proper cloud strategy with, 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 with the proper mindset and, and organization model, then suddenly those companies are, are literally flying and, 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 and doing things which they could not man, uh, imagine before. But it is, it's again that mindset change. Uh, in, 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 I, I, I know companies where, where, where 10 years ago, the IT department did not dare to walk around the, around the floor because they will be, would, would be killed because their laptop is not working or it's slow or whatever. Uh, and, and now, and now the, the CEO should tell, hey guys, technology support, these guys have to be your best friends and you have to work with them. And, and it starts there for me. And, and, and it starts in that sense also with a structured approach. Uh, you, you, you can, of course, do some first test, but but what we see also in a lot of cases, especially around around, around digital and use of cloud for, for digital business, is a first test most of the time works, but scaling it and taking it into production and making it successful, that means that you have to embed it in your organization. Uh, every, everybody can can spin up a machine in the cloud and do some smart stuff and say, look, it works. Um, but then fitting it in your IT infrastructure, making sure that the data coming from your from your legacy systems that it's fitting. The, well, that's that's really that structured approach where you say, hey, it has to be an an, an joint effort between the business, the business development, and the technology development. So 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 that that would be for me a key thing: make it structured, think about it, and 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 and, and then start and start small. And you talked about it and you said controlling the stamps and being able to predict their failure is 200K. Uh, on the other side, uh, uh, Amir said, uh, you know, there is free entry points to the cloud uh, platforms. Is it hard to make a conclusive business case? Because in the end, companies think like that, okay? What is the return on investment? Uh, we are in IT, so it depends. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very uh, diplomatic answer, uh, no, Brian. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the, 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 po the point is, if, if, you would, if you would say, I, I got my, uh, it depends on how you look at your business case. Um, because um, cloud on itself can, can already be a business case by, by, by closing your on-prem data center, move, move the same applications to the cloud. That can be a positive business case. It also can't be a positive, positive, positive business case in some cases. But the thing is, what value are you get generating and how are you going to put money on that value, on that business value? And that's the difficult thing sometimes because we know that, that, that by moving to the cloud, it opens up new possibilities. But what are they and what is the money of that, 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 that new, new business model or new business case or new business opportunity you're getting? That, that's the difficult thing. What we do see is if you do... an if you have the willingness to change, if you have the willingness to say, hey, I am ready to modernize and change my existing IT and making it using the cloud capabilities better, then we see a lot of times a positive business case. But that means that you have to analyze, that you have to check, that you have to start thinking about, okay, how can we change our applications? And that takes time. But that's an interesting one. So um, if you did not monitor your current process and actually your loss and etc., then you also won't be able to compare it to advancement that come with the cloud, right? Yeah. So if Excellent. you're not in control today, <laughs> you won't also be controlled or be able to measure it with the cloud. You yeah. will see that things are moving much faster, but there is no comparison. Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 there's, a, there's a thing that they... Uh, we call it like 
TCO, like the total cost of ownership, right? Uh, so what what businesses usually will do is say like, oh yeah, I'm looking at this server and I'm looking at the virtual server that I'm going to take in the cloud. And then they're comparing it one-to-one, -one, right? That doesn't work because you, you have all these kind of auxiliary things that you're paying for right now that you don't see within the bill of your just your server, right? Uh, because you have the, the maintenance, uh, you have the the power, right? You're, you're paying for the power maybe in some some data centers, you're paying for the location that you need to have. Uh, so it it's not just a one-to, it's not fair to do a one-to-one -one comparison because you're going to miss out on particular things, right? And that's what I wanted to say as well is it, it, um, it depends to make a, uh, it depends on how you, look at the business case if you can make it conclusive or not, right? So if you treat the cloud like you do your on-premises resources, yeah, then it can be a little bit hard to make a, a conclusive business case, right? Uh, but if you if you use the, the cloud the, the way it's intended to be, then uh, you get what Brian mentioned. Uh, it, it would be a positive thing for your business case that you're trying to create, so. Am I, am I comparing car with a horse right now? Uh, rocket ship <laughs> rocket ship rocket ship okay okay so so uh, what you're saying if i understand you correctly amir is that these kind of things and the total cost cost of ownership and actually the advancement that cloud can bring to a company is not comparable to the current situation maybe in some cases but but you should not compare it like that yeah you could but it, it if it's a fair comparison is a, is the question then right um uh, and Again, you need to take into account all these auxiliary things that you're not taking into account right now uh, if you're just strictly looking at on-premises versus cloud. Okay, then then I have an additional question and I would like to ask both of you to, to answer it. So when you look at it, can you elaborate on a business case and how businesses use this technology to improve their business? You don't have to mention names or whatever, but just your favorite case from your experience you know, in the field. Yeah, I, I, I've seen a few actually not in uh, not in my current job, but before as well, where, um, uh, for example, if you have customer reviews, right? If you have these customer reviews, you're a company, you're collecting all these reviews, right? You're collecting all these reviews about how people are thinking about your company right now. Um, usually what will happen is you have a particular company that you do these surveys with, right? And they send out these surveys you get like a grade and you get like the text, right? You get, and that you can show on your website if you want to uh, market it a, a little bit more as well. So what you can see people doing as well is like in that text, there's a lot of data. Uh, people are uh, saying, seeing just the text, but there's a lot of things that in there that you can do something with as a business, right? Uh, so there are particular services that you can use uh, within the cloud that, uh, can give you those capabilities of analyzing that text, right? Analyzing the text for uh, particular key phrases, for uh, the sentiment that someone is having around your company, uh, uh, maybe even uh, particular uh, products, right? If you, uh, if you train the model a little bit more, you can even detect particular products that you're, uh, that you're selling right now. Um, so maybe there, someone is not, you see a lot of complaints coming in about a particular product, right? You can get that just from analyzing those texts. So the, 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 actual, the actual business case there is to, if you want to analyze text, you don't need to, uh, to think about building an NLP or natural language processing model anymore. You, you can just use a particular service, send the text to it, and it will extract those things for you without uh, being uh, without so, having to put in that uh, that effort yourself. So, uh, if I understand you correctly, it's uh, where you should think about. I mean, in old-fashioned way, you would uh, take a data scientist. You would look at your data. You would yep. start thinking about the variables, the the root cause, uh, and etc. Yep. Uh, build a model around it. Here you have libraries in place and you can choose which process are you wanting to take uh, or what is the what is the question. And you can choose a model from a library and mm. you can use it on the spot. 
it's even easier than that. Just you have an API, you just push the text to and say like, okay, I want to get the, all the key phrases and it will get the key phrases out of that text for you. So it's even easier than that. So basically anybody that's a developer can do it. Uh, so anybody that can call an API can use those uh, those particular things. And that that makes it of course easier because as you mentioned, if you need to build it your own, then you need a lot of computing power, a lot of data, uh, and then uh, even then, maybe it won't be as accurate as a, a model that's already been uh, pre, pre-trained for you. Are we talking about data science as a service tied to the libraries? So in, in, in the end, you will just have everything you know at the, at the click of the button for analyzing your process, whatever yeah. your process is. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it as that, but uh, what, what it is, is that it will uh, free up your data scientists to work at the really hard problems that me, maybe cannot uh, solve within a pre-trained model, right? So it will kind of free up your people to do the things that they, that are the really hard issues that you want to, uh, want, want to solve for your company. And there you have the efficiency. Exactly. Or yeah. the return on investment. Yes. Okay. Thank exactly. you. That's a nice one. Brian? How yeah, there the, 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 the are multiple, multiple ones, but one, one, one I like uh, is, is it, what you see in a lot of companies in big, big, big warehouses that nine out of 10 times, they don't know where what is in detail everywhere. So, so, so one of the use cases I've, 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 I've decided you have, have been involved in is letting a drone fly in the warehouse, doing the inspections combined with, uh, with, with, with visual recognition processing of the facial recognition in, 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 in the cloud and suddenly being able to really start getting clear detail about your stock levels, the quality of your stock, where your stock stock is, and the ability then to automate to refills and 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 and, and, and re uh, reordering of, uh, of of stock. And that's that 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 again what, what Ama just told was was showing the easiness of the cloud in making this kind of business solutions uh, available. Uh, maybe in the past we, we could have done that, but then was somebody was programming for three years. And, and, and now you have those pre, 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 pre-processed models. You can easily create your own, own, own models and start to use it. And, uh, still, you need to learn in some cases. Still, you need to, to, to do that. Uh, so it's not like you do tomorrow, uh, but these use cases and these first steps, you can, do, you can, you can get the first res- results in weeks these days. And, and, and that, that's creating so much value that, that and, and, and that's why I was saying business and IT combined because business has the problem. IT has the technology to solve the problem, but if they don't talk to each other, they will, they, they will never learn from each other how, how they can help each other. And, 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 and I see use cases in, in, in this area and, and there are much more of these use cases and can also be very, very simple, simple use cases eh, by, um, by combining, uh, co- combining uh, a lot of uh, source systems, uh, let's call it uh, uh, systems of records in, in, in the cloud and, and, and then getting that data in your cloud data lake and start using that data to, 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 to really get true insights in what's happening in your organization. And that, that's a simple one, but that can create a lot of value also for the customer. So that, that's what I like in the use case I've seen in, 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 in the last years. If I understand you correctly, from both sides, it's actually lowering the threshold of entry. So you can you can go there and you can utilize the libraries, the speed, uh, which was uh, in the previous situation was not possible. This is what cloud enables, and this makes it possible for you to focus on challenging things that really need your attention, but you you're not getting to it because you're too thin spread within the functional already. And that yeah. goes across the board in in all departments. Yeah, and and one one important thing to mention there is as well is is also just the pay as you go pricing, right? Uh, so uh, if if you have that model, that means that if you're uh, say for instance you take the case that I mentioned before, right, with the customer reviews in this case, uh, you send that text, and uh, for example, it has uh, I don't know three hundred characters or something like that. Uh, the pricing is made that way that it will be based on those characters, for example, right? Instead of you uh, having to have the have the the resources to create that model and stuff like that, which is 
is going to be always going to be more than just the the character price right uh, so that's that's also one uh, one really important thing to mention it's not just the, the speed the flexibility and the 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 base of innovation it's just also uh, from a from a business perspective it makes sense to to use that if you can right if it uh, fits your particular use case if you then take this pace, you go model and you, and you go back to your early question around the business case. Yeah. This is typically such a thing which you have to model in if you start working with business cases. So so the the, the, the the pure nature we have is I got a server, that server has four, four CPU, 16 G, gig of RAM, uh, 200 gig storage. Uh, let's pick uh, on the cloud the, exactly the same server. But if you would look at that, users model maybe that is only consumed one day a month yeah so why would i have a big server one day a month if i can have 30 days a month and and, and one cpu four gig uh, ram server well with the cloud i can do that i need to model those things also in and then with the page you page you go models the burst capabilities the scalability of the cloud your business case start to change yeah but you have to know your application and you have to know how to work and that 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 makes those business cases a bit more challenging but then you see the benefits and then you see the money happening that's uh, that's a really interesting point and so so this is also what uh, Amir mentioned previously you cannot have the whole situation translated one on one in the use situation you'd really have to analyze how this service and application is used and what do i really need and how what is the frequency of that need um, and yeah. then uh, the, the interest comes into paying on the, paying for what you're using, not what you're having. Yep, correct. And uh, yep. what what Brian mentioned is a good one, right? Uh, there are cases where, for example, test and accept, acceptance environments, right? Uh, those are typically environments that no, don't need to run the whole day, right? They can run business hours and basically after that, you don't need them. So what you do here is just shut them down, uh, you're going to pay maybe for the storage in this case, uh, but for the rest of the resources, you're not paying anymore. So that uh, gives you a huge uh, benefit uh, as, as opposed to on-premises where you, you have the servers, right? You, you've paid for them, so you, you're going to use them. Uh, so yeah, it, it, the translation needs to, needs to be done before you actually go to, to the cloud. Hey, uh, we're, we're closing to the end. So I have two final questions for you. Just, just can be in, in one sentence, if you may. I think Brian already said it, but if I were an SMB, where should I start today? What should my, be my first step? Yeah, if I, if I look at it, um, I would first look at the, the, the company itself. So just look at the company like, okay, who are the people that I have in here? Uh, what kind of company culture do I have, right? Do I have a culture that's uh, easygoing in, in transformations, right? And changing uh, things that, they, uh, that they're used to? Because that's, that's, I think if you, if you have that, the technology part will, will follow soon after. It's not the, that's not the hardest part. It's actually bringing in that transformation of how your company is doing right now. Um, so there needs to be a strong mindset change that we already discussed uh, previously. And then after that, look at the technology and look at what the business cases are that you have and start working from there, right? And then in all cases, you you should start small, right? Start small with just some non-critical business processes and then work your way up as your your team progresses, right? Because your team is also going through a learning process of understanding what the particular services are, how they're going to structure it uh, and go from there, right? Go through that, that motion of looking at everything separately. So looking at, okay, this particular application is next. How are we going to do it, right? Are we going to, uh, as I mentioned before, re-architect it or we're just gonna lift and shift as, a, as they call it. Um, it, it depends on on your use case then, but those are kind of the things that uh, that work best, right? Don't try to do everything at once. It's just that's just not going to work. So it's uh, step by step, iterative learning, yeah. and, and and then spreading it out. There I say, there I say, agile. <laughs> but <laughs> agile. Yeah. Uh, you, you you know what I mean, right? It's, it's, I get your it's, point. It's the it's the step by step uh, process. Just move through it uh, at, at your own pace and also what's what's comfortable for your team, right? Um, you cannot say like, okay, let's do this in six months if you know that your team still needs to go through that learning process of 
understanding what they can do with uh, with all the services that they have. That's a nice one, Brian. Yeah, I I, I I fully agree with 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 Amar. I think that that if you're an SB, you you have to, you have to do uh, think in in a few ways. First first of all, try to keep it structured. Just don't start running, but think where you want to run to, but 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 be pragmatic and 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 just start and and. Uh, in some cases, it might be wise to 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 look in the market and 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 find uh, a specialist or or, or hire an, a, a specialist uh, um, who can help you to who can help you start. Uh, and then every time the decision is for me is where do you want to do things yourself and where do you want to leverage the capabilities of the cloud and where do you want to do something in between. And and that depends per per, per per company, but especially with with small companies, uh, work on your skills, work on on understanding how it works, but 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 start and do 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 it step by step, as Emma said, because you cannot do everything at once. No. small steps and introduction and alignment with your team. Yes, and try to try to find a sweet spot where you have maybe pain now, or where you can see that that you can quickly create value. Because the first, the first project, the first success will drive the rest. Yeah, of course, of course. That's a bottom-up approach, right? Yes. So the successes will spark new initiatives and uh, a new enthusiasm about uh, let's get uh, more of this. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's also about building habits, right? Uh, so you're you're building habits in in your team, and you know how habits are uh, are created, right? It's just by taking a small step every day uh, and trying just yeah. to to get to that particular goal that you have. Yeah, it's like smoking. You start with one cigarette. <laughs> Don't smoke. <laughs> Don't smoke. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> in a positive matter, right? Um, Guys, it was really a pleasure. Thank you very much. I think this wraps it up uh, for our audience. Um, for, for all people, uh, if they would like to know more about cloud and solutions, you can contact Brian or Amir through LinkedIn. And guys, for you, thank you very much for taking time to elaborate on cloud and wish you all the best uh, in now and in the future. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Uh... Thanks. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.